Well, millions of Australians will have access to cheaper health care from today, with the federal government tripling the bulk billing incentive paid to doctors. To discuss, we're joined by Health Minister Mark Butler, live now from Adelaide. Good morning, Mark. Good to see you. Now, this is, of course, a big change, but I guess the question is, who benefits most from this shake-up? Well, this will benefit all more than 11 million pensioners, concession card holders and parents with their kids who now will find it much easier to get to see a doctor completely free of charge. After 10 years of cuts and neglect in Medicare, we've seen bulk billing rates start to decline very sharply, including for this vulnerable population. And we promised at the last election we'd strengthen Medicare and today we're delivering on that promise with almost $6 billion of new initiatives kicking off today, the 1st of November, including including, obviously, that huge investment in bulk billing. I guess the, the unknown is a doctor's going to play ball, um, and we'll have to wait and see on that, but a lot of Aussies fall outside these categories, especially the vulnerable. Uh, have you left them out? Well, the bulk billing incentives have always been targeted at kids, at pensioners and at concession card holders. That's about 60% of the throughput of a general practice. So not only will be that, that be great for those patients, but it's a huge boost of confidence and funding to a really beleaguered general practice sector that has felt the brunt of cuts now for a decade and has had to start cutting their rates of bulk billing. Now, if they're getting more income, this will be a huge boost to their income. If they're getting more income for those bulk billing patients, the pensioners and the kids and the like, that will relieve the pressure on gap fees that we've seen rising for all of those other Australians as well. I guess the question is though, whether or not we're going to see doctors play ball here. I mean, are you confident the incentives in these regions will actually bring those areas up to speed? Because the gap between metro and regional areas is enormous. Mm. Well, doctors' groups have described this as a game changer and already we're hearing practice after practice say either they're going to return to bulk billing those Australians or their plans to consider their bulk billing rates in the future have been put on hold. Their plans to introduce gap fees for kids or pensioners are being reversed. We're seeing that right across Australia. I'm confident we'll see that from today onwards as well. All right, so you reckon the doctors will play ball? We're very confident. This is what they'd been asking for. After a decade of cuts and neglect, they asked specifically for a tripling of the bulk billing incentive. In addition to that, we're flowing other increases to the Medicare system from today. We're delivering uh, probably the most comprehensive shingles vaccine program from today for over 65. So this is a huge boost to our Medicare system, which is the centrepiece of Australia's health care. I wanted to get you on something else. I think there's an interesting push, uh, Mark, at the moment um, to tax and regulate regulate mm. vapes rather than ban them all together, which has its complexities and isn't all that effective, of giving the budget a billion dollar boost. What's wrong with that idea? Well, I just don't accept that we should raise the white flag and accept that vapes are part of Australia's way of life. They are a public health menace to our kids in particular. That is clearly where they've been targeted. Uh, and they've got one goal, and that is to recruit a new generation to nicotine addiction. And tragically, it's working right now because, you know, the gates have been open. These things are flowing very easily into our country over our borders. And health ministers, not just me, but health ministers across the country are determined to stamp this out. We're determined to remove this public health menace from our kids. Now, the vapes in and of themselves are causing harm to our children, our teenagers, our very young adults, but they're also doing, frankly, what the tobacco industry wanted them to do, and that is providing a gateway back into smoking. Young Australians are the only cohort in the community right now where smoking rates are increasing, and that is a result of vaping. So we are determined to stamp this out. It's not going to be easy. Um, we, are, we are taking some of the strongest action in the world but I'm not going to accept the idea that I oh, would just raise the white flag and see a generation of young Australians recruited to nicotine addiction after all we've done over 50 years to drive down rate the smoking rates and after all we know about what that will mean to their health. Is it actually raising the white flag? I mean, obviously everything you've said is right. It's out there and, and it's difficult to actually try and curb it, but regulating will literally help you do that. 
No, it won't. It'll just mean... Because I know, I know where this is coming from. It's coming from the stores, it's coming from the tobacco industry that want to continue to do what they're doing, which is essentially selling these to kids. You know, the, the, the vaping rates for people my age are next to none. They're very high for teenagers. They're increasingly high for kids in primary school. These stores are being set up deliberately down the road from schools because that is their market. And health ministers and I think school communities and parents want to take action on that. All right, Mark, good to talk to you this morning. Appreciate it. The debate will go on on that one. Mm -hmm. Well, there are growing calls mm -hmm. to tax and regulate vaping in Australia, with National Zeta David Littleproud admitting the prescription model has failed. Across the country, vaping has grown by almost 350% in the past five years, with up to 1.6 million adults now taking up the habit. So you at home have had your say this morning. Uh, Mel says uh, ban mm. them. They are much worse than alcohol and more addictive than drugs. The long-term effects are really still unknown. Ali says, yes, it should be legal. I would rather walk past a vapor than a smoker any day. Let's bring in today medical expert Dr Nick Coatsworth. Uh, Doc, good morning to you. Where do you stand on it? Should it be legalised? Carlos, I'm with Mel on this one. I, d I don't think it should be legalised at all. I'll tell you why. This is a scourge affecting our young people. The drug nicotine is, is highly addictive, making it different to, say, alcohol. We've had stories only in the past week of young people having to have nicotine patches to get through their final Year 12 exams because they're so addicted to the nicotine in vapes. And tobacco companies are deliberately targeting young people. So for all those reasons, the framework that I would usually support, which is legalising and regulating and taxing, I don't think is going to work for, for vapes. And keep in mind, Carl, we've only been going hard on this for the past 12 months, so I'm inclined to agree with Minister Butler. It's not the time to raise the white flag on this, and it will be easier for kids to get vapes if you try and legalise, regulate and but, tax but them. The, but the whole will. idea, Doc, mm. is... Um, I mean, it's so easy to get these things now. Mm. Despite government, multiple government task forces in various states, yeah. it hasn't stopped any of it. So I would have thought regulation would have at least um, set the, the guidelines and the yeah. borders and, and then if someone is selling them and it's not regulated, then they're fined. Look, I get, I get it, Carl, I, I really do. But imagine if vapes are just like alcohol, you know, you get your 19-year-old brother or sister to go down to the bottle and buy yourself a, a, a brick of Bundy for, for the weekend what? when you're only 15. That, <laughs> Who that's did that? What, no one did yeah, that. You reckon, you reckon, Who's reckon been no talking? one did that? You, you're from <laughs> Queensland, aren't you? Isn't that what they do? Every no, weekend. Seriously, yeah. seriously, guys, I mean, that's that's the availability yeah. that you'll get if you legalise uh, vapes. And, and that's not what we want. Yes, they're easily available now. Yes, we need to crack down harder. No, it's not the time to raise the white flag. Yeah, it just seems like it is a bit of a mess. I mean, every street corner you walk around, somebody's got a vape. Obviously, it's, it's happening and no-one's stopping it. All right, let's move on. Major shake-up on the bulk billing front. What impact do you think this will have? Well, this was the centrepiece of the Albanese Chalmers budget, wasn't it? We had the whole of the Labor caucus cheering this $3.5 billion measure, which will roll out over five years, where about 10 million Australians will be eligible for the bulk billing incentive. Now, that's just eligibility. It remains to be seen whether GPs are going to pass this on to patients so why wouldn't and actually they? bulk bill them. Well, they may take the view that it's still not economically viable. Mm. Personally, I think it does improve the viability of bulk billing. And I think GPs should, because their own college, the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners and the AMA have advocated for this. So I think we expect, as of today, Carl and Sarah, as of today, significantly more Australians to be bulk billed. Mm. The ball is in the court of general practitioners. All right, Nick, I can't stop thinking about that brick of black rats now. You've got <laughs> Look what is, you've done. Is it Friday? I've got work with you for the rest of the morning. <laughs> is it Friday? Oh. <laughs> I don't advocate that, by the way. Oh, whatever. I don't care no, what you advocate. Take responsibly no. at the right age. Exactly. Love your work. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Hey there, Today fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?